Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Winter Olympics podcast. Yes, that's right, you heard me properly. Uh, we decided that we'd like to do this because uh, myself and Pro Tipster Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Johnny's joining me today. Um, hello, Paddy, and welcome <laughs> all of you guys. To so, we, it's very we, special, the Winter Olympics. Very podcast. special. We decided we want to do this because we're both uh, big fans of uh, winter sports and. Uh, yeah, I just I love the Winter Olympics. You you become an expert on such crazy sports as the skeleton and the luge and well not curling. Curling is not a sport. We won't. We, nobody <laughs> likes curling. <laughs> no, but uh, Johnny, welcome back, man. I uh, hope you enjoyed your holiday. Thank, thank you very much, buddy. Looking forward to, to two weeks of uh, truly uh, winter winter sports. Uh, as we've heard, that it's very cold in uh, in uh, in Korea. And in the, in the venue of the of the Winter Olympics, so it will be a truly uh, Winter Olympics by by its name. That'll be perfect. Yeah. So the um, as as we're recording, we're only about half an hour away from the uh, from the opening ceremony starting. So if that starts while we're recording, we will of course comment on the hilarity of it and just the ludicrousness of opening ceremonies. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there are um, there are five. Olympians from Ireland. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Five. Uh, yeah, one, I think. One, let me see. One is actually an American uh, chap, uh, Seamus O'Connor. He's our best hope. He does uh, mm-hmm. freestyle um, snowboarding. So he's going to be doing the the half pipe and the slope style events. Yeah, slope style events. And he's going to, he's like our flag bearer. He, he made his debut four years ago. He was 17 then. He's pretty good, but I, I don't think he really has a chance. He lives in, in, uh, California. I think his, his Irish, his parents are Irish. And we have another fella, cross country skier, Thomas Heilmar Westgard. I think he's from, I think he's Finnish. But his mother is is from Galway, so yeah, there are uh, two main hopes. There are five. I think a lot of the Irish ones are like people who who live abroad or or, or a parent is Irish, that kind of mm. thing, you know. Buddy, uh, you so best be, luck to them, you, buddy. You can be sure that Ireland is not the most exotic country mm. at the Olympics. <laughs> <That's what> the <laughs> they're not, are they? Who, there's the bobsleigh team from. Uh, oh, remind Ni- me, Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant so and, look uh, d- there is a skier from Tonga as well which might uh, compete for the most exotic <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> and this is you know actually this is part of the Olympic um, culture and of the Olympic idea to give chance uh, of course to all the nations in the Olympic family to compete and that this is something we look forward to in the upcoming two weeks that's to see really is the, even st- not only the stories about the big winners and about the historic uh, medal takers but also about uh, countries like this which uh, yeah, do you we remember, don't see often on this stage yeah did you remember four years ago there was um uh what was his name the austrian guy but he skis for mexico is is he there this year uh i'm not, I, I'm not sure actually buddy i remember he was taking part for mexico i'm not and i haven't heard uh, about him this this time uh, this time around Pr- I, have um, it, I have it his name prince hubertus <laughs> yeah, so his name is Prince Hubertus of Hohenlohen-Lagenburg. Sorry, listeners, we have some builders in my house. Uh, yes, I, I don't know if he's there. It doesn't say on Google if he's there. I hope he is, because last time he had this uh, amazing... Uh, um, uh, n- not luchador. Uh, luchadors of the wrestlers. What do they call the guys? Ma- uh, mariachi. Yeah, he had an amazing mariachi uh, ski outfit on. So hopefully, he's pretty old though. He's in his fifties or sixty yeah. by now. But anyway, yeah. right. Let's move on. Um, we have quizzes for each other before we get on to the meat of it. Yeah, we decided to do the quizzes to to introduce the Olympics and to test each other out as a part of the of the fun part of the, of the, of the podcast, but also to to get. Um, to know more about this special event that is coming up in Korea. Right then, so I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, I have 15 for you. I'm not too, too sure how many you have for me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've got only 7 questions for you, Paddy. 7. I remember I was testing your knowledge from tennis and it didn't work. No, no, the, so tennis, well, so. the tennis quiz so. did not go well at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I, I cut down the questions to seven, but 
uh, let's say it this way. These one, these ones are very easy. Right. Well, hmm. let's see. Well, so what we do because you have seven, I have I've double yours. So I will give you two questions for every one of my questions. Okay. And what, basically, all I'm going to do for for you, Johnny, is that I want you to explain each of the winter sports that are going to be held at the Winter Olympics. And I'm going to give you ten seconds to do each one. Okay. Oh, that's a difficult one. All right. Let's let's see let's see if I can if, if I can do it. Okay, so let's, uh, so yeah, I'll give you two, then you give me one, and then I'll give you two again. So first up, uh, you have 10 seconds to explain alpine skiing. Uh, skiing down the hill. <laughs> um, yeah. Skiing down the hill, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there are one, two, three, four, five, around five or six disciplines in the alpine skiing, both men and women. Um, we will talk more about the most famous uh, skiers. Uh, the purpose of the, of the of the skiing is to get down the hill as soon as possible in, in different uh, disciplines without dying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second, biathlon. Um, similar country, but with the difference that uh, the athletes have to also shoot uh, the targets. Uh, right then, so what's your one for me? Okay, I'm going to start with a very very easy question, and then it's not related to even sport. Name the most famous Korean dish, meal, food. Oh, um, do I have to be politically correct here? No. Dog? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dog? <laughs> You're serious. <laughs> well, well, I, well it, it, you know, it, in my defense, it's the most f- infamous, not famous for good reasons, famous for bad reasons. Okay, I was thinking of kimchi. You know what's kimchi? Kimchi are like little dumplings, yeah? No, it's not exactly. What's kimchi? Uh, if you, if you, if you, you guys Google kimchi, it's very, it's very famous dish. Uh, it's a Korean national dish. It's like a... Uh, oh, the cabbage! Uh, Fermented cabbage! With, yeah, exactly. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You recall yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's very famous. Not, not all the people like it, but that's... That's very, very typical Korean dish that I was thinking of. I actually knew, thought you were going to know this. Yeah, well, the, the, the amount of stuff that I don't know, Johnny, is, would fill many, many books. <laughs> <laughs> right, next That's up the for you then. So, <laughs> next up for you then, uh, bobsleigh and cross-country skiing. Cross-country skiing is like running with the skis against the time. Um, bobsleigh, uh, yeah... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's being one of the most craziest sport that it's on the Winter Olympics. Going down the how do you call it properly in English? Uh, pipe? No. Pipe? I don't know. Yeah. Icy yeah. track. I see track against the time as well, and not kill yourself with the <laughs> estimated purpose of, of the sport. I'd love to do the Bob's Day. <laughs> Like the, the place, the place right. where, we go, where we go skiing in Austria, you can do it in, in Innsbruck, but it's fierce expensive. I, I, would, I would love to do it someday, though. Uh, Man, I, I'm not sure I would be brave enough. Yeah. <laughs> to go down ah, a couple of pints and you'd be grand. Right then, what's my next one? <laughs> okay, now a very Olympic question. What do the five Olympic circles represent? I know this one. Uh, the five rings represent the five continents, so it's for in inclusion of, of everyone. Very correct, yes. Paddy. Very, very well. Very well done. I learned that in prim- primary school. Still remember. Uh, you're next to then uh, curling and figure skating, which aren't sports. Yeah, curling. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a sport <laughs> as we as we call it. <laughs> uh, what was the next one? Uh, uh, figure skating. <laughs> figure skating. Yeah. So it's. Um, Ice skating uh, on the ice rink, performing lots of figures uh, with the music in the background, and it's more—it's very artistic. Uh, so let's say sport. Uh, it's more—I would say it's more art than sport. Mm-hmm. But it's—you uh, you can see some nice visuals, and the athletes are very fit. Uh, and when you got nice music in the background, it's really nice to see. Once in four years, let's say this way. <laughs> Once in every four years. <laughs> All right. What's what's my next one? Okay, name four indoor winter Olympics sports. Uh, okay, well, we just in- had two. We just had two. So curling and figure skating, they're indoor. Uh, yeah. Ice hockey. So two more. Yeah. And the one where they run around. Uh, speed skating. Exactly. Yes. Get exactly. in. 
Uh, I, I said four. Actually, they might. You, you could even name five, but I, I said four. But the, the one uh, we didn't mention is uh, short track. Short track. Okay. Yeah. It's just yeah. like a relay. I mean, it's very, it's, very, it's a bit similar to speed skating, but of course, it's it's smaller, smaller ice rink yeah. and smaller circle they have to they have to make. So uh, I didn't want to confuse you too much. So that's why I said four. <laughs> but very, oh. very well. Done. Oh, you're very kind, Johnny. You're very kind. Uh, next up for you then. So freestyle skiing and ice hockey. Well, ice hockey. That's the most obvious one. You play uh, five, five plus one goalkeeper against each other. Uh, of course, this year Olympics tournament will be a bit special. We will mention this a bit later. Um, ice hockey and the other one? Uh, freestyle skiing. Freestyle skiing. Well, again, very sport that reminds more of me of art. Uh, you ski down, uh, you make, make different tricks, uh, try to impress the judges and the jury. Um, that's one of the disciplines. Then there is a... a Another one when you when you go, go down against uh, this, in this bumpy track of uh, oh the moguls yeah moguls yeah that's another one so freestyle skiing is one of the most uh, enjoyable things actually to watch at least for me it's something I don't see every day well there are a lot of these sports you don't see every day or every week uh, on TV and it's nice to see in once in four years. Yeah, I think my favorite has to be uh, ski cross and the snowboard version of it. I, I love those. It's just like you got to be crazy to do that. You know, four yeah, four skiers against each other, like bombing down a mountain. It's just amazing. I I, I completely agree. Maybe a bobsledge. I mean, uh, yeah. That's, it's uh, nuts. When you look when you look at those guys, it might be very brave to very brave <laughs> to, to come down. Uh, right. What's okay. my next one? Uh, this is a, maybe a more difficult one, but uh, let's try. Most popular Winter Olympic sport in Korea. <sighs> I don't know. Okay, I will give you a hint. Yeah, please. It's it's not ice hockey. <laughs> 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 All right, I only have third, fourteen other sports to. I don't know. I'm trying to think. What what would South Korea be good at skiing? Alpine oh, uh, ski jump. You don't see see some Koreans, but not many. Pfft. Probably okay, I'll give, bigger I'll give skating, is it? Three, no, I'll no. give you three options, all right? Okay. So, A, alpine skiing. B, speed skating. C, uh, short track. Uh, I'm going to guess speed skating. Almost there, but not there. The short track. Yeah. Damn it. No, so close. That's right. one of the most successful sports in uh, Korea, obviously. They are very good athletes uh, in terms of uh, physical abilities, and this is this is exactly the sport for them. So it's mm. yeah, short okay. time. Uh, next for you then, the luge and the skeleton. Uh, well, they are very similar. Uh, I think one of them you you both you use the pipe like in bobsledge. Just uh, you go. There are things. There are singles uh, competitions and doubles. In uh, Luge, as far as I know, both men and women. It's a very crazy sport, very dangerous, because all you have underneath is just a nice piece of, uh, yeah, material. That's uh, carbon that, fiber or something. Yeah, it's very dangerous. I've seen some very, very hard crashes on on in, in the sport, especially the skeleton where you go da- uh, with your head down. Uh, you know. Yeah, head first. Yeah, yeah, head, head first. That's 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 crazy, man. That's yeah, something. That's insane. Like, I mean, even when I watch it, I feel like, ooh. <laughs> it's like it's like the reason anybody, you know, Formula One. You you really only watch it because you want to see some crashes, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you but see you a don't crash in skeleton, this, yeah. <laughs> if you see a crash in this sport, then uh, yeah, it's, it's usually a serious one. Yeah, so it's pretty bad. Okay, next right, up for you. What's next for me? When was the first Olympic village? You know, the Olympic village where the Olympic athletes mm-hmm. uh, stay during the Olympics and the Winter Olympic. When, when was the first Olympic village uh, introduced at the Winter Olympics? Uh, you see, Johnny, no one knew. I, I think you're trying to trick me up here. So <laughs> I, it's either, I give you, it's either, I give you uh, options. Yeah, okay. Uh, so A, 1960 in Squaw Valley. B, 
1994 in Lillehammer. C, 1998 in Nagano. Yeah, I, t- I think it's kind of... Something tells me it's recent, so I'm going to say the most recent one, 1998. Uh... Almost there, but not there. No, this hammer. one was way. This one was way off. Nineteen sixty. Okay, oh, wow, well, well, way off. Wow, well, <laughs> you weren't trying to Squ- trick me. Sorry. Squ- yeah. Right there. This uh, was a di- this was a difficult one. I, I I agree. Next for you then, uh, Nordic combined and the short track skiing. Yeah, short track very similar to speed skating. Just the ice ring is uh, smaller. There are more crashes. It's more than dynamic. Uh, Koreans are very good at this sport. So we're looking forward to this one. Nordic combined is a, is a combined of uh, ski jumping and cross cross country uh, running. Yeah. Ooh, I Skates haven't seen that short. one before. That sounds exciting. Ski jump. Which one? So you ski, ski. What do you do? You you do some cross country first and then do a ski no, jump. No, 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 no. It's the other way around. You do a ski you jump first. first. Yeah, you ski jump first and then depend. There, there are of course some criteria that you get points for ski jumping. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah, yeah, as you yeah. know, and, and then. Uh, depending on how, how many points are there difference between the uh, uh, the athletes, then the, the, you know you start first. Whoever finishes first in the ski jumping ah. starts first, and then after a few seconds, well, depending on how big the difference okay. in points, then the second the second athlete comes in. Yeah, and but then there are some you know the, the thing in this sport is that you got some who are very good in ski jumping and they are quite poor in uh, in uh, in cross country. Uh, so skiing, so they need to like do the very very good at uh, in ski jumping to mm-hmm. have to stand a chance of finishing uh, in a solid position after the second uh, discipline. Mm-hmm. And then you've got some who are average in both, but who can easily win. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting interesting one. Okay, what's up for me? Um. Okay, I'm looking through the questions, which I... Okay, what is so special about this year's Olympic ice hockey tournament? There's just one thing that is very special. There's no no NHL players. Ah, very well. Very yeah. well done, Paddy. Boom. Yeah. yeah. I'm disappointed about that. Well, that's, uh, we'll speak about it uh, mm. shortly, but that's... I mean, I think all of the ice hockey fans are very disappointed about the decision that was made. Uh, there were talks uh, to make a break in the NHL until the, almost the, well until end of the last year, but uh, I think it's simply ma- a matter of uh, money. Oh and, yeah, definitely money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will speak about uh, it in a while then. So, uh, what's next for you then? Well, you mentioned speed skating. I would just yeah. go ski jumping and snowboarding then. Well, ski jumping, it's one of the most dangerous winter sports. Uh, of course, you. Jump from a hill uh, to, to, of course, to make the attempt as long as possible. Uh, figure skating? No, what was the other one? Sorry, uh, snowboarding. Snowboarding. Well, there are different uh, disciplines in snowboarding. Uh, half pipe, um, for example, which is uh, very artistic for me as well. You, you need to show off your skills and. I think it's a sport for young people, so it's very exciting. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um... Let me see then. So uh, this is so the Olympics. They're being held in a place in called. I have to get this right now, and I know I'm going to butcher it. Pyeongchang. So Pyeongchang. It's in the, yeah, it's in you the know, north. This is inter- yeah, it's a, it's in northeast of South Korea. The interesting thing about this part, uh, just because of the Olympics, they renamed the city, and the C, you know, the C in the middle of the name is with, written with capital letters, and you know why. Yeah, because because it, it's like the capital of North Korea, isn't it? Pyongyang. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is very. This is this. This is the reason. A lot of <laughs> people were kind of getting it mixed up with Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Obviously, especially the South Koreans wouldn't like to have it mixed up with uh, North no, not Korea. Really. No, but, but but there's something interesting about the two countries. They're they're competing under one flag this time, aren't they? Yes. Well, to to get this correct, uh, and I. Checked it out uh, several times in the recent weeks. So they will be marching. Uh, they will be in the opening ceremony, which starts in uh, around half an hour. I think they're, they're usually the, the TV coverage starts now, but uh, the Olympics uh, opening ceremony starts in exactly at 12 o'clock uh, CET. They will march under one flag, under Korean, 
uh, under a neutral flag. But uh, they will have an ice hockey women's team that will have its first match, I think, tomorrow on day one that will be playing under uh, under name of Korea. Yeah. yeah. So the, the athletes will compete uh, under two different flags, so it's South Korea and North Korea, but there will be women's ice hockey women's team who will play under the one, under one team called Korea, and the athletes will march on, uh, under one flag in oh, the opening ceremony, which is already <laughs> a success. I would I would say it's, yeah, it's yeah, nice. Yeah. It's it's it only proves that uh, sports sometimes it's much stronger than all the politics. Oh, exactly, man, and and it's way more interesting as well. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> but definitely. Um, look, I don't know if, if if you heard the news this morning. Um, there were seventy four Russian. Um, uh, sports people who uh, had appealed um, uh, their ban, and just this morning they lost that appeal, so they won't be appearing. Mm. Well, as as we all know, the Russians will will not compete under their flag. They will uh, be known as the Olympian athletes of uh, of Russia, mm-hmm. Olympic athletes of Russia. Uh, so they will. Uh, Compete under the IOC, IOC flag. Uh, obviously, this follows the big scandal, uh, doping scandal in in Russia and the decision of the authorities. Uh, well, this will have a impact um, partly on some uh, on some athletes that cannot take part. A lot of athletes uh, who who could prove that they were not part of the doping scandal. Uh, can take part, but not uh, under the Russian Federation yeah, yeah, yeah. flag. It's, it's, mad. it's, it's really. For example, messy, the it? ice hockey wim- uh, ice hockey men's team will play. Uh, they will have, the, of course, the Russian players, but they will not play under under their own flag. So that will be quite uh, strange. Right then, Johnny. So look, tell us about some of the some of the sports you're, you're most looking forward to. Okay, I think. Uh, we'll speak first uh, about the ice hockey tournament uh, because that's that's what is uh, probably most uh, interesting for our pro tips to users uh, because they can submit their picks and selections uh, on protipster.com and in a different uh, language versions of protipster we have ice hockey in our menu uh, the tournament starts on Wednesday so guys don't be too surprised you won't find the matches yet on protipster but they will be there uh, in due time. The women's Olympic tournament starts tomorrow already, and you can find these matches already on ProTipster. For the women's tournament, very shortly, the biggest favorites, as usual, uh, USA and Canada, these two are the driving force in the ice hockey and in, in women's, women's ice hockey. Uh, rarely, Russia and um, Finland have their... But I don't expect uh, anything else than USA against uh, Canada uh, final. Yeah. Speaking about men's tournament, this is when it comes interesting. As Paddy uh, correctly answered my question, this tournament is played without the NHL players, which is obviously a big blow for the quality of the tournament. And but it also brings kind of excitement because obviously USA especially Canada, but also the powerhouses like Sweden, uh, Russia, uh, Sweden, Russia, Finland, uh, Czech Republic, they will be without their best players who are playing in NHL. So this might give opportunity to other countries uh, which which would have not probably have the the same chance if the NHL players would would be involved. So let's preview this tournament very shortly. So you think? Let, let me just jump in there. So you think like countries uh, that that have their own leagues, like uh, Switzerland, Germany. Uh, you think the, these types of countries uh, and Russia, obviously, they'll have they have a bigger, uh, a much bigger chance now to shine. Uh, I'm not saying that they they are the favorites to win the Olympics, but they have more chances this way. Yes, I, I would say mm-hmm. this way, uh, especially with Russia. I think they can benefit the, the most from this uh, situation. Obviously, Russian KHL league is uh, the second best in the world after yeah. NHL. Uh, this competition made an agreement to stop the competition for for the for the and to have 
uh, Olympic break. And this makes Russia, for me, the biggest favorite uh, um, of the Olympic tournament. Of course, we speak about Russia, but as we said just a few minutes ago, they will, it will be Olympic team of Russia, uh, just to say it correctly. Mm. But we will mention, we will talk about it as Russia. Uh, they have some great players, players in their squad, uh, from all of them, just to mention the few, uh, Ilya Kovalchuk, who played long years in NHL, Pavel Datsyuk as well. So they've got some big names in their squad, and uh, I would rate them as the favorites. Obviously, Canada and USA are the ones that will be most inf- influenced by the absence of the NHL players. Um, they will rely mo- mostly on their European players, which for them is a big loss in quality, obviously. There will be some young, young players uh, in their rosters as well, from the Universal Leagues um, in North America. Speaking of other nations, uh, Sweden suffers a lot also from not having NHL players. They will have to they will have to rely on mostly KHL players because they've got quite a few, and some of the home players from the from the home league. Finland, Finland, uh, yeah, yeah, they also. Like all the all the big countries, they will mostly take on all the good players, the good players, and then uh, then fill the gaps with uh, either home players or players from other European leagues. The same from Finland. Czech Republic is an interesting one. They have some interesting names um, in their squad. For example, Martin Erot. Uh, there are quite a few from former NHL players in, in this squad as well. Um, to, to to complete the the, the 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 shape of the tournament, so we've got the tournament system. We've got three groups: Group A, B, and C. Group A consists of Canada, Czech Republic, Switzerland, and Korea. Group B consists of uh, Olympic team of Russia, Olympic athletes of Russia. Let's say this way: USA, Slovakia, and Slovenia. And Group C consists of Sweden, Finland, Norway. And Germany. Out of this, uh, of course, the players, uh, sorry, the teams play each other in the group once. Uh, then uh, there is the the best four teams are so the group winners and the the, the best second ranked team qualifies directly into the quarterfinal, uh, where they will be joined by the four winners of the. Uh, knockout the elimination round uh, which will be played uh, just j- uh, j- just it's one match uh, mm. tie mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can't wait I love the ice hockey really love I'm, I'm, and I'm so disappointed with the NHL stuff and I understand why, why they did it because it was uh, because uh, you know just as the Winter Olympics starts uh, American football has just finished uh, baseball hasn't started yet, uh, so NHL, a lot of people are watching ice hockey at the moment in America, and they didn't want to lose a lot of TV revenue. I understand why they did it, but it's just crappy, <laughs> you know? I mean, last time they, they missed out in the Olympics uh, was, uh, I think, in uh, Lillehammer in 94. Mm-hmm. Um, since then, they have always agreed somehow to, to take part uh, the only problems was for some of the nations in the previous tournaments. Uh, when before the, ter- the Olympic hockey tournament cha- system changed, there was a qualification uh, round before the main round directly at the Olympics. So some of the smaller nations that had their best players in the NHL were suffering because the NHL agreed to have a break during the main main tournament, but not in the qualification yeah, the tournament. Qualification. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so, for example, countries like Germany, Slovakia, let's say. Uh, I don't know, uh, Norway would have suffered at that time because they were had to play the qualification but without their best players and only if they qualified for the main round yeah, then they course. would be joined with their best players. So, But not, n- once the system changed, we had a great uh, Olympic tournament in uh, the last time in Sochi, uh, or even four years before that in Vancouver. I mean, for me, it's a big disappointment we won't see because usually this was the peak of the uh, ice hockey schedule the, the Olympics 
as we as, as ice hockey fans know, the World Championships takes place every year. Uh, but then the Olympics were used to be the peak of the of the career of the players mm-hmm. on the international level. So this is a big, a big disappointment for everyone. However, it brings excitement uh, as we as the tournament gets more unpredictable. We will get to see um, more, let's say, more open games. And it's hard to even uh, judge the teams. Of course, we've got the Roosters. We can say that these players are playing better league. But then when it comes to the national team games, it always starts with 0-0. So every game. <laughs> <It's> true, yeah. <laughs> this, and, yeah. So we really, really look forward to, to exciting tournament. And let's see who comes out as a winner. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I hope, hope it'll be good anyway. And uh, I, 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 I hope it's one of the smaller ones that goes far. I'd like to see... Uh, I know it'd be pretty cool to see Germany or Slovakia or Slovenia get into a get into a final or semi final, you know. We want to talk a bit about um, skiing. So uh, there's a couple of skiers who are, uh, you know, people are tipping to uh, pick up the gold here. Uh, you have Michaela Schifrin in the um, women's, and of course the Austrian powerhouse uh, Marcel Herscher uh, for the men. So tell us a bit about both of those and their chances. Well, Michaela Schifrin, uh, the USA Alpine skiing, uh, uh, is a, one of the best. Uh, is already in her age. She is the legend. She is the legend of the of the sport. She is. She's simply the best, uh, as Tina Turner would think. <laughs> uh, at, at the moment in her sport, she is a great, great in slalom and the uh, giant slalom. She's not. Uh, she's in not more into the curvy disciplines of slalom and giant slalom. Not so much into the downhill and the uh, fastest. Um, she starts her on Monday in giant slalom. She's a defending champion from Sochi 2014. Uh, her strongest discipline slalom comes on day five of the Olympics. Uh, then we've got um, Austrian Marshall Hirscher. Uh, he's won everything in the sport has to offer. I mean, he's really a champion uh, he's 28 now but and so this should be the like the peak of his career and he's uh, finally looking uh, to win the Olympic gold which uh, he's missing in his collection and uh, this is uh, I think the best time for him uh, to do it and uh, he's got the capability he's got the quality he's got the form so I think the stage will be his at uh, in the in the men's. Yeah, it's, it's really men's. for him to lose, isn't it? Not not really not for him to win. Well, you know you know how it works uh, at, at the Olympics. You can be the best the whole season, yeah. but then the pre- the pressure comes uh, that you you have to win. You've got the you know you're the favorite, and it's the most important uh, event of the four year cycle. And then the pressure is huge. The moment comes, the day comes. You have only one try. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, it's true. Like it's when, a, when, when I watch when I when I watch her and and, and Schifrin as well. Like I, I, you you watch them and you, you kind of pay a, a little bit of attention to their technique and all. And you just you just have to wonder. It's like cause I, I ski as much as I can. You know, it's it's not that often. It might be two or three times a year. Uh, the longest would be a week, and then maybe I'd go for a day or two here and there. And you kind of watching them going like. Just how good are you? Like it's amazing. Like I, I think I can get down a hill pretty quickly, but compared to these guys, like it's a joke. Yeah, <laughs> you know they're, they're and, and ima- they, they, they've, and gone, they've gone two or three times by the time I'm halfway, <laughs> kind of thing. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it's incredible. And uh, imagine the ski slopes for them are really icy, oh, and yeah. it's, it's made it's made icy for a reason to yeah. be to be to be fast. So last year I was I was. Uh, I visited the Kitzbühel, uh, the famous Kitzbühel race, um, the Hamenkamm in uh, in Austria. Oh, what uh, the, the, I was there this time last year, yeah. This time, well, it's in well, Jan- January. It's in January last oh, man, year. Man, I was there. <laughs> no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, crazy. I visited. I visited that one. Uh, I mean, it's the most famous downhill race of the season. It's a uh, very dangerous one as well. It's mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it's crazy, yeah. And. And I saw actually the the, the 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 track from close, and I mean it was super icy, uh, and the jumps there were really dangerous. Uh, the, the the track the in South Korea is uh, not that that dangerous, and it's not that hard. Let's say this way, although it's 
I mean, it's of course, of course, it's not easy. But compared to that one, uh, what I was gonna say that uh, respect to all those uh, guys that compete in this sport, it's a difficult one. Although it may seem in TV quite easy, you know, you just go down, don't have to work out much, but it's it's amazing. It's uh, so difficult for your for your legs well. for your legs. Yeah, it's. Um. So look, uh, tell us uh, how's how's Sean White doing? Because Sean White he really jumped to fame back in two thousand six in, uh, in in Torino, um, and he was kind of the poster boy for uh, Vancouver as well. Then, but um, he didn't do very well as Sashi. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about, uh, Sean White is probably is the most famous snowboarder ever, probably. Well, he's the arguably, I mean, the highest profile athlete and. Uh, Winter sport, especially for the Americans. Uh, he's the biggest favorite to win the half pipe uh, this time as well. Uh, he skipped the extreme games, which are after the, the Olympics, the biggest event for uh, snowboarders and for other extreme sports. So, I mean, he's the legend of the sport, let's say this way. He's uh, all the young snowboarders would know who Sean, Sean White is. Uh, let's see how he does this time. Uh, he's definitely the biggest favorite and I'm looking forward to see him to, to, to see him back in action. Uh, for I think personally it's, it will be very extremely difficult for him to reclaim the to reclaim the title and to come back on, on, the, pod, on, the, on the podium after he missed out in Sochi but I think he's capable of doing it. Yeah, well, I hope he, he's back to winning ways because he was. He definitely un- underperformed uh, four years ago. Um, what else is there then that's uh, tickling your fancy? Um, just to mention a couple of other things, we've got Sven Kramer, the Dutch uh, speed skater. He was won two, 28 World Championship medals. <laughs> uh, he's look. He's looking. To, <laughs> yeah, that's quite a number. Uh, of course, uh, speaking about speed skating, there are different disciplines. You know, different. Uh, uh, distances that you you can compete at, so that brings uh, the more possibilities to win the to win the medals. But still, that's kind of a result you have to respect. He's looking to secure his third secu- success, successive sorry uh, Olympic uh, crown in uh, 5,000 meters. Uh, but he's got a re- really uh, very tough opponent in Canadian Ted Jan Blumen. Uh, that will be his. Uh, Biggest challenge to beat this guy because uh, Ted Jan Blumen recently beat his world record uh, in this uh, discipline, and there was a bit of controversy how he did it and what how he acted afterwards. Let's say this way. Mm. So it will be uh, one of the. I, I think it will, will be one of the highlights of the of the, of the Winter Olympics. To continue uh, looking at the highlights, uh, I'm looking forward to see Martin Furkan in biathlon. Uh, he, probably his biggest competitors will be Johannes uh, Bo. Sorry for the pronunciations. Uh, um, and uh, also, uh, yeah, uh, with his elder brother Tardy Bo. So Martin Bork Burka top, tops the ranking, uh, third Olympic gold in Pyeongchang, uh, following two titles in Sochi and. Uh, He's the dominant force in the sport this season as well. So uh, I've heard an opinion that there was that there's no that there was no better uh, biathlonist ever than Martin Furcat. Although we've got we know that uh, there were quite a few really really good ones uh, in in history. But uh, let's see how Martin does this this time around. Uh, just to complete the picture, he's he's French. Then we've got. Uh, Short track, obviously, uh, it's a home discipline, so you expect a lot big crowds on this on, in this sport. Uh, huge support uh, for the for the home athletes. Uh, one of the what who would be definitely a favorite, Viktor An, the South Korea-born Russian, is absent. Uh, therefore, it gives boost to the to the host nation and to to the home uh, home athletes. So it will be a battle between the 1,500 meters world champion Sin Da Wun and the world overall world champion Seo Yi Ra. 
uh, sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> Congratulations. Are there. Very difficult for, uh, <laughs> so, and it also, it's considered to be one of the highlights of the, of the games, obviously. The atmosphere must, will be amazing at these, these, these events. Just shortly to come, coming back to snowboarding and the half pipe, there is this, uh, Chloe Kim, uh, it's a breakthrough moment for her. If I'm not wrong, she's 17 only. And she would have already qualified for the last Olympics, but because of her age, she could not go. So she is looking to make a finally breakthrough, uh, in the, at the Olympics in a very young age, a very young age. To mention a few more, there is the cross country. Of course, this, uh, this sport is, uh, it's a Nordic sport, so Norway is, uh, expected to dominate. Uh, it will be a first sport where medals will be given out on Saturday. Norway's Marvit Bjorgen is a strong favorite to secure a victory in the women's, uh, women's 7.5 kilometers plus 7.5 kilometers skyathlon. Uh, she already has six Olympic titles, so this would be her seventh. Which, which, well, that's a, that's a number, buddy. That's mad. Mm-hmm. That's mad. So there, there are several highlights uh, other than ice hockey, which which are worth uh, watching. Uh, let's see how. What, of course, this, the, the the Olympic Games always write stories of its own and uh, stories that we we cannot predict and that are, will be uh, interesting that will attract the attention of the whole world yeah. and that's what Olympics think, are all um, about I think I think ski jumping is, is, is going to be very close as well because I'm just looking at the odds here Kamil Stock from a local boy here in Poland he's just he's the favourite and it's between, really it's in the betting it's between Kamil Stock and Andres uh, Wellinger from, from, from Germany mm. uh, after that like those those two guys the prices are Kamil Stock's 2.5 to win uh, Wellinger is 2.65 and the closest the closest guy after that is at 11 <laughs> so mm. and uh, and Kamil Stock's having the season of his life he's been, he's been amazing uh, this year even last year he was great as well um, but Wellinger Wellinger isn't letting, letting him out of his sight so it probably Probably will come down to the two of those, two of those guys on that. Yeah, plenty of action to look forward. Yeah. Plenty of uh, winter sports. Uh, we we know these sports might not be the most popular sports uh, amongst our fans on Protipster, but uh, we believe once in four years, uh, our attention should also turn to, towards these sports. Of course, we will follow up with a lot of ice hockey action on Protipster in, in, in the upcoming weeks. So we will. Break down the uh, the ice hockey tournament. Follow us on on social media. Follow myself, a product Johnny, on Facebook and Twitter. I will get you involved in the ice hockey tournament because this is the part where we can uh, help you with with uh, betting on product yeah, Absolutely right. So we'll wrap up then, uh, Johnny. So thanks very much for joining me, uh, folks. We hope that you enjoy the the Olympics this year and uh, yeah don't be shy about getting in touch if you've any questions about betting on the different sports and of course as well uh, while I'm here I better remind you that um, we on our uh, pro tips or shop we are giving away a day of um, access to our pro tips to our premium our premium uh, offers and that will cost you 5000 uh, pro tipster coins which sounds like a lot but here's the thing when you sign up to pro tipster we give you 10000 so there you go you get two days of pro tips for absolutely free so make sure and check that out and uh, yeah uh, you can get in touch with uh, me and Johnny. We're on Facebook, Pro Tips to Johnny, Pro Tips to Paddy, on, on Twitter as well. And uh, we're always hanging around the Pro Tips to UK page on Facebook too. So that's it then from us, and uh, we hope you enjoy the games. Take it easy. Goodbye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are Pro Tipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.